Got my ice picks close just in case. Uh oh, see what we're working with here. <laughs> Not looking great. I do see a little boat up here. So we're gonna kind of, not really sure how we're gonna do this. Maybe if I push with my spud bar. Oh yeah, that's the ticket. So if I scoot, you can see I can scoot pretty darn good once I start going. We'll start right here and see if we need to move out deeper. Since I'm just gonna bust open a hole like this and fish right over the side here. Yeah. Not sure if you can exactly call it ice fishing, but we are most definitely fishing. We're on ice. I'm calling it ice fishing. Well, as you can see, it's official. I have been out on some early ice. I've been ice fishing. And actually, I went a little further to a different part of the lake doing that in the boat and found some safer ice in an area that I actually really like to fish. And unfortunately, even though I got over to that area, I did not even see a fish on the live scope. I fished most of the day, actually, and I tried a ton of different stuff. This has been a very consistent early ice walleye like for me. It is smaller, it's shallower, so that ice freezes very quickly and we can get out there before a lot of these other lakes. But with that, you also have that tendency to get some winter kill every once in a while. And this is one of those lakes that I was a little concerned was going to have some winter kill because of how shallow it is. Um, and again, I have never been out there, not even seen a fish, um, let alone not caught a handful of walleyes and a bunch of pike mixed in. So little concern that that lake had some winter kill. I'm hoping I'm not gonna find too many others like that in the area. But Either way, I wanted to still leave you with something, something valuable, even though this video didn't end up panning out. And I had planned on already shooting a video like this, talking about kind of my go-to early ice walleye setups, you know, so I'm gonna run through the presentation, the rods, the reels, the line, kind of everything that I use during this early ice time frame. And a lot of these can translate to kind of the whole winter as well. So I'm gonna run you through some of my top setups and we're gonna jump right in to uh, presentation number one. And that is a rattle bait. Um, this is a classic early ice presentation because during that early ice time frame, a lot of these walleyes can be a lot more aggressive than they might be later in the year. So this rattle bait, um, there's a lot of different kinds. This one is the um, Euro Tackle Z Viber. And as you can see, it's that white, it's actually got glow. And you can probably hear, if you can get that, uh, it's got a good rattle to it. It's got good vibration. So a lot of these rattle baits, whether it's a rip and wrap or um, I can't remember what the one from Frostbite's called. I've used all of those, really like them. Um, been giving this one a shot here for this part of the year. And this is something that I use a lot. And I have it pretty much tied on all winter long because again, during this early ice time frame, they can be very aggressive and hit these baits. These are really good for kind of scouting. And when you first get to an area, dropping it down, kind of ripping it around, seeing if it can draw some fish into the area. So almost like that tool that can bring these fish in, and then you can have your one-two punch of a different presentation if they're not willing to bite these. So rattle baits are a great early ice presentation. And this is on a 34 inch medium by PC Fun. This is the ICX Focus. And they just came out with these rods this year. And when I heard the price point that they were gonna be selling these at, I was honestly a little skeptical. But looking at the overall build, again, I haven't got to use it a whole lot. The overall build of these is very good and I'm very impressed with that. So I'm looking forward to trying these out this year. This is, a, like I said, a 34 medium. I would say it's almost a little more like a medium light. So this is going to cover most of my walleye presentations. This 34 medium is a very useful, basically all around walleye rod. And that's kind of when they introduced some of these rods, they wanted to just get a few on the market that would serve the most amount of need. So they have a 34 medium, a 32 light, and that one has the spring bobber. And they have a little bit shorter one. I can't remember, I'll put it on the screen here. Um, that one's a little bit shorter, but it's also an ultra light and has a spring bobber as well. So a couple things that I like about this rod, you can actually see it has that high vis green tip and so in those low light periods, it's really nice to be able to kind of see that bite. The action has been very good. The build has been very good. I get it in the golf grip. I can't remember what they call it on the website, um, but I really like that style grip. You can see I actually have mine wrapped. I really like to wrap mine because I like the smaller kind of grip on it when you get those bands on it sometimes makes it a little thicker 
Uh, but I like to do it one of two ways. A lot of guys will use electrical tape and that works very good because you can kind of pull it tight. Um, but that doesn't seem to last quite as long. I really like this kind of self adhering. I don't even know the exact name of it, but basically it comes on with this plastic behind it. And when you can pull it really, really tight and you can stretch it a lot so you can get it really tight on these rods so that the way the reel stays on and it's not gonna have any flex to it and it adheres to itself. So once it's stuck to itself, it is stuck and you have to be careful because it can also pick up a lot of dust and if you get dust on it it's not going to stick as well and if it sticks to itself it's going to be pretty much impossible to pull apart so this self-adhering um, i'll throw a link down below or i'll put a picture of it so that way you can take a look at that i really like that for wrapping my reels but like i said they also come with some reel wraps uh, so if you like to have those rubber band type style that also comes with these rods so that's just another benefit another couple things that i like you can see that hook keeper that they have right there and you can actually see this kind of metal piece that connects that i haven't seen that on a lot of rods but i really like that that makes it feel a little bit more put together and a little bit more sturdy and these rods come in a blue kind of like this one blue with the thread and also comes in a red like that um, so I like the color patterns on those and that 34 inch medium is kind of a nice little in-between for having it as a hole hopping rod, but also being able to use it in a house. It's kind of a good in-between for that length. You know, you have a little bit more length if you're being outside, but it can still fit inside that house if you want to fish with that. So again, like I said, a very versatile rod and one that I'm pretty much going to use for the majority of my walleye presentations this year. The reel that I have paired with it is the PC Fun Carbon X2. 1000 i really like this 1000 size reel for the majority of my walleye setups and again i'm running that carbon x2 for a lot of my ice reels because of the improved drag a little bit lighter so it pairs very well with this rod and this rod i believe this is the clam ice braid um, if i'm not mistaken i tried a couple different ones this is one of the new ones that i tried this is that clam ice braid i'll throw up a picture and maybe a link in the description below here as well but that is um eight pound braid sometimes i will go to 10 pound braid as well uh, but i do eight pound braid to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader again i will also up that to a 10 pound at times for these rattle baits because these rattle baits can also trigger uh, some pike bites and things like that so sometimes i'll up it a little bit but that eight pound braid to the eight pound fluoro is kind of a deadly combo and works very well for this setup so that's setup number one and presentation number two is a type of spoon and i'm going to kind of talk about a few different spoons and this first one that i'm going to talk about is more of your heavier style spoon this one is the euro tackle t flasher and these heavier style spoons are great for your hole hopping this one is actually tungsten which i'm really excited about um, i haven't found a lot of spoons that i like the density of them uh, but this one being tungsten you can easily use it for hole hopping when they're still slush in your hole you can drop it down get it through that slush you can go up and down very quickly if you're moving from hole to hole so having these little bit more dense spoons like this are ones that i use a ton for that kind of hole hopping bouncing around you know you have the northland buckshot spoons a lot of those little bit more dense spoons work well for that another thing that i actually like you can see on this t flasher it's got that little bit of hair on it on the bottom there and i really like that because i will usually tip my minnows or i will usually tip my spoons with a little bit of a minnow head or a minnow tail but if it does happen to fall off it adds a little something there for them to key in on so i like having that just as a little bit of a backup i'm not going to always use it as kind of my main source of bait for these guys but having it on there as a backup is very nice this is also on that 34 inch medium again like i said it covers a lot of my bases I'll show it one more time you can see this one's more of that blue color uh, so really nice design on these 34 inch medium pc fun carbon x2 2000 again and this one actually has the eight pound suffix 832 advanced you can see it's in that white color um, one of the things that i've noticed i do like kind of like the higher vis line or some of that colored line you see a lot of that lighter blue line with some of the ice fishing stuff i really like that especially in the summer for being able to see some of those bites but you'll notice it fades very quickly if you're out fishing a lot some of that line can fade quickly so being able to have a white like this is not going to fade quite as quickly you're going to be able to have that kind of consistent color like that um, so that is the suffix 832 advanced eight pound to the cigar eight pound i believe it's an ice 
fluorocarbon as well. I can't remember. Um, again, I'll put a picture up of that one. And that is all tied together with a uni to uni knot. If you are interested in checking any of these rods or reels out, I will put them in the description below. Again, they are already incredibly priced and you can save yourself a little extra money. You can use code TJE15. That'll save you 15%. It'll also help me out. So go ahead, check that out. Links are going to be in the description below or you can go to the PC Fun website, uh, but use code TJE15. Go ahead and check some of these rods out. You will not be disappointed. Very impressed with these so far. That is my setup for the Heavy Spoon and another presentation kind of along the same lines. Um, it's still technically a spoon, but it is very different in a very different style. And that is a spoon that's a little bit more flashy. This is the Euro Tackle Spade Blade. You know, you have some of those ones like the Frostbite Dinner Bell or the Clam Leech Flutter Spoon or VMC has the Tingler Spoons and the Tumbler Spoons. All those ones that have a little more wobble, a little more flash. And one of the things that I've noticed these spoons, I think they have, I feel like they should have that flutter on the way down, but it definitely has more of that flutter on the way up. Sometimes on the way down, they will just kind of have that slow, steady fall and they won't have as much wiggle. But one of the things I like about this T-Flash, you can see those extra little blades on it. Um, just having a little bit extra, you can see even just moving it a little bit, that's that extra movement. And on the back, you can see, there you go. You can see it's got that little rattle chamber in there and just adds. Oh boy, now I hooked myself. I was trying to get you to hear the rattle in it and I hooked my mic, there we go. Uh, so it's just got that little bit extra noise to it. So that's another presentation that I use a lot and there's a lot of different kinds. Honestly, I feel like I could fish 90% of the winter with a different style of spoon because there's so many different types and they have so many different purposes. And again, this one is a little bit more of that fluttery type spoon, a little bit more action. And again, this is another one that I will almost use like a rattle bait at times where I will use it to kind of get that attention and get that flash to draw these fish in. And then I might pair it with another style of bait to have down there as kind of like a one-two punch. I will tip that one with a minnow head as well and just to have that little extra scent down there. Sometimes I'll do a whole minnow. Uh, just having something on there for that scent. That's again, 34 inch medium. PC Fun Carbon X2 2000 with that same Suffix 832 Advanced Ice Braid and the Seaguar. Um, those are both an eight pound, that fluorocarbon as well. Sometimes it'll even drop down to six pound for me, both of those even on a little bit more of a finicky bite. Moving on to my next presentation. And this one, I'm getting a little bit more finesse. And this is one that I've done a lot in probably the last four years. And that is using some sort of like tungsten ice jig. See if I can get out of my sweatshirt here. That is using some sort of little bit, almost like an oversized panfish tungsten ice jig. You see a lot of companies are making these now um, in a little bit bigger sizes. And this is an awesome dead stick presentation. This is, I use it a ton on like the Finicky Foolers or an iFish Pro. Being able to have this and I actually, you can see that hook. What I will do is I will hook the nose right through here. I'll go right in through the mouth, out through the top of the head. And that way that bait just sits nice and horizontal. It can get up and down very quickly. Again, if there's slush um, and this is a great dead stick. So sometimes I'll set it on a bucket, set it next to me. This is the 32 inch light and you can see it actually has a little bit of a spring bobber. Um, there we go. And what I have found for a little bit heavier tungsten jig like this, this spring bobber is a little bit light for that. So what I've done, and I probably shouldn't even say this, but what I've done on a couple of my rods is I've actually taken this spring bobber out because this action, this 32 light is a perfect noodle rod. So I can use it for kind of like my dead stick rod. It's got enough backbone to fight some of those bigger fish, but it's got a light enough action in the front end to be able to kind of absorb a little bit of those bites. And you can use it like a dead stick when I'm setting it right next to me having my jigging spoon and having my dead stick presentation right there I can easily identify those bites or I can use it on something like a finicky fooler as well if I would like so like I said this is that 32 inch light I'm using it as my kind of dead stick rod as kind of like a walleye snare rod it's not quite the same as your typical snare rod PC1 hasn't come out with an actual snare rod yet but this I think is going to serve that purpose for me quite well this year and I'm really looking forward to that. Again, paired with the PC Fun Carbon X2 1000 on that with that suffix um, braid and the Seaguar fluorocarbon. And kind of going right off that same style of presentation, one thing I'll do a little bit different and I don't, actually don't have one rigged up right now. 
um, but another thing that I'll use in kind of that same style, this one I use a little bit more on say like a finicky fooler or an iFish Pro, and that is basically having a plain red hook and having either a shiner. Sometimes I'll, if I'm targeting bigger fish, I will use bigger red tails or creek chubs, use some of those bigger minnows, or I can even do it with a fat head and downsize that hook. If I'm using those bigger minnows, I'll use a number two a lot of times, kind of an octopus hook. I really like those red hooks. If I'm going down to like a fat head, I might go a little bit smaller to a size four or something like that. But I have that tied to my fluorocarbon leader. A lot of times I'll go down to a six pound with that because again, a little more of that finesse approach. And then about two to four feet up, I will have a split shot. And essentially that split shot will just help it get down. Um, depending on how much your minnow is gonna move, I, if it's gonna move a lot, I'll move it closer to that. If it's not gonna move a lot, I will move that split shot a little further away, maybe more like that four foot range. But again, this is gonna be kind of my dead stick presentation for my finicky foolers, for my iFish Pros, even when I have it sitting next to me. I typically, if I'm gonna have it sitting next to me, I like to use that little tungsten jig, but it is something if I notice these fish are just wanting a very specific presentation and something very finesse, I will move to that as well. And that is on that 32 inch light, using it as kind of like that snare rod, that dead stick rod. But yes, there you have it. There's a quick rundown of some of my presentations that I'm gonna have tied on for this early ice time frame, and honestly, a lot of the year, the rod, the reel, the line, the presentation, everything like that. If you have any questions, let me know or if there's something that you like to use that maybe I don't have on here maybe something that I should consider feel free to drop that in the comments below always willing to try new things I am never done learning so be, feel free to drop those in the comments and with that we are finally on the cusp of getting into some actual ice fishing content I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get out and get a video done this weekend because I'm gonna be going to the St. Paul ice fishing show I will be at the Norfin booth so if you're heading to the St. Paul ice show make sure you come say hi I uh, love to chat love to say hi talk fishing a little bit but really looking forward to that never been myself and I've heard tons of of good things so i'll be there this weekend and then hoping to get some ice content out very shortly after as always i appreciate the support um, i really want to say a couple things too i noticed that a lot of people have been going out of their way to comment or to like or to share i really really appreciate that that honestly means more than you know uh, and it's been having a great impact so thank you so much for that thank you for all the support over the last years and recently as well if you're new um, but with that thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time